welcome to another episode of Closing Deals in Heels. I'm your host, Kayla Hodges. And in this episode, we are going to dive deep into what would help you become successful in a new role in sales or walking into a sales position in the first place. I have so many women that transfer over from B to B to B to C or B to C to B to B. And they're like, hey, like, what do I really need to do here? to make sure that I'm doing every single thing possible to become successful in this role. So sit back, take notes, baby girl, I got you. No worries, we're gonna go through every little step here. We're gonna break this up in 30, 60, and 90 days of every single thing that's gonna help you. So month one, you are in something new. It is your job as a salesperson to get enrolled in the vision of this company and what they're trying to do and who they are trying to help. This is your job to be a sponge. This is not your job or not your time to showcase your opinions on what you think should be better and how you are knowing of a better idea from a last job or blah, 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 like zip it. Like this is not the time. This time just be a sponge. Just learn, just observe, just allow yourself to be friendly, to be kind, to be a team player and to be secretly competitive. You are observing people's behaviors. Take notice of stuff. How do they show up? How do they interact with people? How do people communicate? Is there any issues within the team? Like what's going on here? And you're just taking notes. How much revenue do they have coming in? What's the cash flow look like, right? Depending on the industry, it's also gonna depend on what you're also focused on. In B2B roles, right? You're gonna be focused more on like building client relationships, or maybe they give you a whole entire a platform of all these different relationships that you need to manage. So I'd be looking at other people around me and how they do things. And I and I don't want to take every single thing that they're telling me as white and black. I want to take everything with a grain of salt. Because at the end of the day, you are going to want to add your own flavor, your own way of doing things. Um, not what I'm not saying here is doing it completely different than what they told you. Definitely not saying that. But I am saying that you're wanting to take note because you're going to want to do things um, in a way that feels aligned to you. Yeah. So I'm not talking about changing verbiage or anything else, but you just want to make sure that, that you're looking at stuff and just taking little notes for yourself. Because if there's ever a point where you do want to make changes, you want to be there long enough to build a credibility and the trust, and you want to put enough numbers on the board in order for somebody to want to listen to you. So. First thing here is that you typically do your orientation, you do an onboarding, and you want to do goal setting here. Goal setting, you want to make sure that your manager or whoever you're working with understands the goals that you have for this company and for your life. You want to make sure that this company is in alignment with the goals that you have for yourself and for your life because if they think that you're going to do one thing and you think that you're going to do something completely different and it's a mismatch, is there going to be a really good chance that you're going to feel um, discouraged at the end of that time? Now, I want to make sure that I am clear on every single thing that is expected of me. What are my KPIs? How many people do I have to contact? How many people am I expected to sell? Right? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to show up? What meetings do they have? What is their vision of what an employee looks like? Like, I'm just making sure that I have full understanding of every single little bit of my role and I'm observing and I'm learning I'm putting my head down and I'm just getting what I need to get done, done. I have their expectations of me fully understood. So if they need me to be on certain amount of sales calls by the end of a certain period, I'm like, what do I have to do to make sure that I'm ready for that? Anything that I have a question on, I'm making sure that I am going to get clarity on that because if I walk in to my role and I don't have clarity on something and I'm going to guess because I'm afraid to ask or whatever, like I'm going to be doing myself a major disservice. Time management, depending on the type of role that you're in and depending on the type of industry you're in, you're going to want to manage your time appropriately. So many of us overestimate what we can get done in a year and underestimate what we can get done in a week or a day. If you can learn how to time block and you can learn how to do things efficiently with your time, you're going to be able to flow so much easier. If you feel like you're a chicken with your head cut off and you're running around to the next thing and the next thing and the, like 
you're going to be exhausted and there's a really good chance that you will burn out. Most of the time, I see women burn out of new roles at month three to four. They push, push, push. They're so excited at the beginning and they go, go, go. And they're crossing their own boundaries and yada, yada, yada. And all of a sudden they're like, I can't do this. <laughs> and they get out. So we want to make sure that does not happen to you. Um, the second thing that we want to do here, you would already have a better understanding as to what's going on. And you would already have a better understanding as to like how the role works and what your responsibility would be in that. You would already have a better understanding of how your world works and your responsibility in that. So what's really important here is that your second month is all about momentum. You know how to talk to people, you know what areas of growth you still need to work on, and you're starting to get more of the hang of things. You're starting to understand how to call people, you're starting to understand how to have certain conversations, you understand the product better, you have all this knowledge of 30 days of experience behind you, and yet you also have so much more to grow. So we want to like pump the, the gas just a little bit here and make sure that you feel good and grounded. Remember earlier when I was talking about time management and time blocking, if you don't know how to give yourself strategic breaks throughout your day, it's going to be very difficult for you to perform at the level that you're wanting to perform. As a woman, we are not meant to perform like men. Men are wired to hunt. They are wired to provide. They're wired to go, 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 go. And that's why we love men, right? We love that they do that. That is not what my body is wired to do. And the fact that I would expect myself to run a million miles a minute is a literal ludicrous. It's ridiculous. It is so silly. So I have to give myself a little bit of grace and allow myself to block off some time for myself to literally do nothing. Sometimes in my day, I have a 30 minute break to do nothing at all. And if you're part of a large organization and like corporate organization, sometimes it's really hard for you to create strategic breaks here and there, but you got to find 15 minutes somewhere. Can you go walk to your car, just sit in your car, just breathe, or just take your lunch and half of it eat and half of it just go find some time to be by yourself, listen to some music, do some breath work, like something to get you regulating your body. You'll be surprised on how much more energy you have throughout the week. Taking care of yourself is number one. It's my job to remind you that. Take care of yourself, babe, because if you can't take care of yourself, who is going to take care of everybody else, right? And we're so used to, as women, pouring out of ourselves so much that we run on empty. We give and give and give to all the people in our lives, to our kids, to our relationships, to friends, to family. We're just like, here, 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 here. And then when we look back at ourselves, there's nothing left. And you're not supposed to pour from an empty cup. In fact, you're not supposed to be pouring from a full cup. You need to be pouring into yourself so much so that it's pouring out and overflowing out of this cup into a little vat. And you are using that vat to pour into other people. And so if you're noticing from yourself a lack of energy, if you're noticing from yourself that, man, like I just feel a little empty, I'm running on empty. It's a really good time for you to stop and smell the roses, literally, and find some time to take care of yourself even if it's just 15 minutes here and 15 minutes there throughout the day. We talk about um, building relationships. You're wanting to be building relationships with clients. You're wanting to network. You're wanting to build relationships with people on your team. Like get to know your team, right? Like have the willingness to focus out outside of you. You'd be really surprised on how much maybe one person on your team member knows. They can support you. Maybe they have a better way to overcome an objection. Maybe they have a better way to prospect a um, a future client and if you get in the head about you and you're not willing to ask for some support you're gonna miss out on knowledge that's literally at your fingertips ask about people's families get to know who they are get to know who's around you right and just take the extra moment to show that you care and you'd be really surprised at how a very little goes such a long ways try to refrain from talking about yourself so much not about you and when people think about you like what is the perception that you're giving them you're responsible for the perception that you give your team do you show up late are you on time right do you always do what you say you're going to do are you your word are you determined are you responsible are you in slack are you in the messages are you active are you bringing in deals I've seen so many times where somebody is so good at putting numbers on the board and yet they're not bringing in deals. I hit my KPIs today. Like, what are you doing? Right? So 
you want to make sure that you are not giving people advice or anything yet. Like you are just making sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is bringing in revenue to a company and you're focusing out and being kind to others around you. <laughs> it's not time to talk about your ego, not talk, not time to talk about what you've done in the past, not time to brag. Like this is not time for that. Like be a silent killer. Okay. Just like, if you're competitive and you like to hustle and all this stuff, like just keep it to yourself, be there as a team player and put your head down because you still have so much to learn. And unless you are bringing in huge deals consistently every single day, there is a big gap in your skill level and what you're bringing to the table right now. And again, you're going to be in such a better position to be able to negotiate what you want and everything else is if you keep your head down and you can focus on just bringing in numbers and asking yourself, like, what did I do wrong in this call? What did I do wrong in, in this conversation? How could have I done better? How could have I um, made this person drop their guard more? And if you're really focused on that and taking responsibility, you're going to be so much more better prepared for your third month, which is you really figuring out how to master the basics. Are you filling out your end-of-day reports? Are you on top of your admin? Are you making everything done in an efficient way? Are you communicating clearly? And are you focusing on the skills that you need to make sure that you make the most amount of money possible in this position? Skills get the deals, right? Skills. And if you're not willing to practice these skills and you think that you got it, ooh, that's a very dangerous place to be in because there's going to be someone out there that's practicing and they were going to outlearn you. Somebody that's your competition on another team is selling the same product in the same industry. They're going to get that sale out from underneath you because they are hungry and every single day they're working on becoming better. And you're over here thinking that you have everything because you closed a couple deals and then you stop. No, 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 no. We want to be learning. We want to be growing. We want to be humble. And we're in a place where we're like, how can I get better? How can I get better? So what are the tools that's going to help you get better? Firstly, we want to be focusing on role plays. If you are not practicing role plays, then you're doing what my friend Melissa Romizo says. You're practicing on your money. Why do you want to be practicing on your money? That is horrible. That's like getting ready for game day and you do no practice and you're just in there to play the game. Like you think that you're to perform. That's like if you were dancing and you never like practice the dance and now you're on stage and you think that you're not going to mess up. Oh my God. It's so silly. Why do salespeople think that they can just walk into sales conversations and not practice? You have to role play every single day, every single day you should be role playing. And if you've been doing this for years, then you should be listening to your conversations every single day and be like, Ooh, that weird word was there. I said this, I said, gotcha a couple of times there. I need to remove that. And you should be diagnosing your conversations. The difference between average sales reps and really good people in sales is that they're obsessive with analyzing what they say. They're obsessive with it. I, I watch recordings of myself all the time. Like, okay, touch my face here. I need to lean back here. When she said this here, I could have slowed down just a little bit more. And I'll go to somebody that is more knowledgeable than me. And I'll ask for some feedback. If you're not getting feedback by somebody that can understand how to make you better, then you're going to stay at the same skill level, right? You have so many things in a sales conversation that will make you better. Number one, your tonality. Tonality is the hardest thing to learn in sales. Mastering tonality is extremely difficult. Like, think about it. Think about how you learn tonality in sales. Not a lot of people teach it. Not a lot of people teach how to use your tone to get a prospect to drop their guard and want to have a conversation with you. So it's really important that you're learning this, right? So that you actually have the skill set to navigate around certain things that happen in conversations, right? To pick up on little things that you would have not noticed unless you were paying attention. Um, the second thing is that you wanna focus on your cadence, how you're talking. There's different cadences and different tonalities that you'll have for different industries, for different types of conversations. 
my tonality on an outbound call is going to be pretty different than it's going to be on an inbound call. My tonality on a poll call is going to be way different because I'm trying to pattern interrupt this person that doesn't even know me, that's a complete stranger, and get them to want to have a conversation with me. So there's just different things that I could do to play around with, and I can't get better at that unless I'm role playing, unless somebody's giving me feedback that knows better than I do. Um, feedback as well, you gotta ask for it in a new job. Some people have really, really great training processes in place where they're reviewing your calls and giving you feedback. If you're noticing that you're not getting your stuff like reviewed, you gotta ask for it. Be like, hey, I noticed that you haven't reviewed this. Can you please look at this? Can you please tell me this? There is nothing that is more satisfying than a sales rep that is hungry to learn. I can't tell you, like, I love when my sales reps ask me questions and want to learn from me. I will go out of my way to help them because they're hungry, right? They're hungry to become better. They're hungry to know more. And if you are asking your manager or your uh, executive for some support, like, ooh, they love that because they know that you're hungry to want to bring more cash flow into their business, right? Also, if you don't have support in your company, you need to look outside of yourself. Be in some type of training program that allows you to role play every day, that allows you to get the feedback that you're needing so that you can become better, so that you're not stuck at the same income or having inconsistency every single month. Um, I think also what's really important is you learning how to manage your pipeline appropriately. There are several different ways that you can make money here, right? Depending on your industry, depending on your role. But first is like hunting, going out there and getting new leads. Even if you're like a closer that like gets appointments on your calendar and you don't have to really do much, you should be calling people in between your calls. Like you should be farming leads from somewhere and trying to get more cash flow in the door. Um, second thing that you can do is following up with people. If you don't have a good following up pipeline, like you're gonna be doing yourself a huge disservice. And if you start a new role somewhere, it's great because you can start over a new pipeline and now you have a new follow-up process to put in place. And it's so much easier than not following up at all. And now you're looking down the line to all these people that should have been followed up that never got followed up with. And now you're trying to revive these leads that are super, super dead. <laughs> um, so I wanna make sure I'm managing that pipeline. Where can I spend my energy today that's gonna make me the most amount of money? Who can I call? Where can I show up? How can I be? And so many times as a sales rep for women, especially, we find ourselves like getting busy doing nothing. Oh, I'm going to go like clean my desk. I'm going to go, what, what do they do? I'm going to go get on this meeting with this person. I'm going to go meet this person for lunch. I can't tell you how many lunches I used to go to in B2B. And I think that these people are going to have deals with me and they weren't. They just wanted to have lunch with me. And I had no idea because I was brand new and I didn't understand. I'm like, if you're nice and I'm nice, you're going to buy from me. And that is so incredibly not true. We want to make sure that we're asking really clear conversations and we're getting commitments from people. Somebody wants to go to lunch with you? Like, yeah. So John, like, so let's say we go to lunch together and I go over how XYZ can solve XYZ problem. What would be our next steps at that point? Oh, well then if everything looks good, we'll present you to our our next um, board meeting and we'll do the X, Y, and Z. Okay, great, this person has good intention. Oh, well, we'll have to get back to you. If the answer was like that, ooh, probably shouldn't be in that lunch. I wanna make sure that everything that I do is intentional and everything I do is bringing me one more step closer to money. You wanna make sure that you set yourself up for success so that you can put numbers on the board. You are so much at a better place to ask for things if you're bringing cash into the company. If you're the person that's asking for favors and you are not bringing in sales to the company, it's it's a very difficult position to put somebody in because even if you're nice, even if you're great, like it's really, really hard to bless you and to give to you when you're not showing up as the best version of yourself. And the number one way that people don't show up is they're not asking for support. If you're just in the role and you're blazing by and you're just hoping and praying that you get better and hoping and praying that something works out and you're not asking for help, it just shows that you don't really care, right? And that's not fair. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to the company. It's not fair to anything else. So make sure you're practicing your skills. So again, 
first 30 days, really just allow yourself to be sponge, to soak everything up, to learn, to be friends with people on your team, to understand how everything works, to ask all your questions, get clarity. You don't want to be a month two and have questions that you should have got answered in month one. Um, the second aspect is that you're really wanting to build momentum on what you're doing. Start closing some deals. Start having some better understanding of what's going on. Have good conversations with prospects. The last 30 days up to that three months is really mastering the essentials of what you need. Role plays, feedback, asking for it, asking for help, asking for support, looking at the numbers on the board. Are they in alignment with the goal that you had in place for yourself? If they're not, where do you have to grow? Who do you have to become? What do you have to do? And be constantly asking asking for that support. If you're not getting that work, to be seeking out outside help. Somebody is gonna have to be able to share their knowledge with you in order for you to get better. It's not gonna happen on your own. And if you believe the lie that you're just gonna take sales calls and hopefully at some point you're just gonna learn after you take all these sales calls, how to sell better, like like that is so, that's so absurd. It's gonna take you years, years and years and years of trying and failing if you're gonna think like that. And you have to ask yourself like, how much is a sale worth to you? If you're getting paid commission and you have a sale that's worth 500 bucks for you, and you're wanting to trial and error and learn, first of all, there's a really good chance you'll get fired if you lose too many deals. And secondly, that's a lot of money to be throwing out the window. Let's say that I didn't have the right skills and I wanted more and I was just to be able to close like one more deal a week at 500 bucks. And that's an extra two grand a month. Over the past year, that would be 24 grand that I didn't touch. And that's just super low end. What if you close two deals extra a week? right? And it was only 500 bucks. There's so much money to be left on the table in sales if you don't take the responsibility to become the person that's capable of having the skill set to be able to close somebody. And if we blame the prospect or blame the leads or blame the management, blame leadership, and don't take responsibility for our own skill set, you're going to be bouncing around to job, to job, to job, and still not getting really the results that you want and the results that you deserve. If you want to make money, it is up to you. Repeat after me. If it's to be, it is up to me. If you want to be a shining star on a team and you really want to be like number one on the leaderboard and you really, really want to master this game of sales. It starts with you looking inwards at you, you giving yourself the validation that you're craving, you putting your head down and really studying. I woke up at four o'clock in the morning to study for my job when I was first in sales. My kids still sleeping, me mentally and emotionally exhausted to train every day before work because I was so awkward and I stuttered so bad. And I would have these awkward objections and no one would take me seriously. And all these guys are being so rude to me or wouldn't even look at me in a sales conversation. But I was so obsessive to become more and to be hungry. And I think that there's a lack of obsession these days with somebody that really wants to change their life. Mastery is the repetition of skill, which means I have to role play every day, I have to practice every day, I have to become better every day, I have to listen to my calls every day. And that would be very tedious, right? Like that's not something that's just easily obtainable to do. Like that's tedious work. But how bad do you wanna change your life? How bad do you wanna change your family's life? How bad do you wanna be able to go to a charity that's so important to you and be able to donate a huge check and change people for the good. There's so much that's possible for you, but we don't even think that far sometimes because we're worried about what happens next. What you don't understand is that you're going to have to become a whole brand new person in order for you to obtain the things that you want. And that's not just working on yourself internally. It is working on your skill set every single day, becoming the best you that you can possibly be, being humble, being willing to look at where you went wrong and how you can get better and being willing to take that feedback and grow. Like it is a bumpy road. Having some appreciation for yourself along the way goes a long way, but you got this. You absolutely got this. I hope that this was helpful for you. Just kind of the first few months on a job, right? Show that you're a leader. Show that you're disciplined. Show that you have a good attitude. Ooh, there's nothing worse than a salesperson with a bad attitude. If it's all pissed off every time they don't close a sale or all whiny, oh, it's so hard. Like, you know, so you don't want that, right? Like it's hard. Yeah, it's hard for everyone that's new or, or newer or changed industries. Like put your head down, stop complaining and work really hard. You will be celebrated in public for what you do in private. So put your head down in private, work, 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 role play, practice that script, get some feedback, right? In fact, 
if you want some feedback on your script right now, you can role play with us. So just message me on Instagram, Kayla Living Boldly, and say, hey, I want to uh, I want to role play with you or with your team. And somebody on our team will get on a call with you and listen to you and just kind of show you like, hey, this is what you're doing really good right now. So don't change that. Hey, this could make a few changes. Slow down here. Or you could say this word instead. This was said a little bit too fast. I just show you what you should change so that you can sound better. And then if it feels like maybe we can talk about some additional training options to maybe help you, we'll talk about those at, at that point. But let's focus on you first and get you some help and get you some support and actually listen to you to see if you know tonality like you think you do and see if maybe what you're saying or asking is causing some resistance with your prospects. I honor you. I will see you on the next episode. I hope this helped. And please uh, do us a favor. Make sure that you like this podcast, that you give us a review, you share it to another woman that you know that's in sales. Um, I want to be able to help as many women as possible know how incredible and how important they are. And that comes back to us supporting each other as women. So please share this to another woman you know, and we will see you on the next episode.